The story is from Luke chapter 13, verses 10 to 17. And probably you're asking, um, why is it that in your title you say two cripples when uh, there's only one in the story? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding to that. Yes. <laughs> because I, I believe that there's two cripples in the story. There's the, the woman who by physical difficulties and deformity and, and uh, infirmity, you know, in a physical way, she was crippled. But then there's the other one, the leader of the synagogue, who also is crippled. He is crippled by his own attitude towards Jesus Christ because he was so focused on his tradition, so focused on the old covenant tradition, the legalistic aspect, and also that of hypocrisy. And that also cripples the man. And when we look at these two examples, the crippled woman or the crippled man, who was healed in the story? And so that's what we're going to focus today in this story. It is a very simple story, but it is so rich with so much lessons that we can get in there. It's almost like it's compacted with, with historical background and what the writer Luke was trying to address. You have to remember the writer here is Luke, who is a physician. And Luke, whenever he writes, he writes in details. He really describes them really well, Luke. So we can at least say that this was written well and he gives the details that he knows. And the story is so challenging for us to really grasp because, you know, whenever Jesus Christ wants to teach a particular lesson, he grows, he, he, he points through certain situations that are often challenging. For example, in this case, it is about the Sabbath. Now, that is a controversial topic because. The Sabbath is a teaching among the Jews that is so important. The Bible in the Old Testament, for example, says that God has given Israel a sign or their identity as God's people by their keeping of the Sabbath. That makes them different from the Gentiles. And so they hold on to the Sabbath and, and so for so many years, the Jews have wanted to keep their identity. They didn't want to lose their religion and identity. In fact, they were even captives of other nations, the Babylonians and the Persians. And it's because of their keeping the tradition, it's because of their keeping of the Sabbath that preserved their identity. You know, when we read through the scripture, it's easy to say we can easily judge them. You know, these people the legalism and all of that, but when we try to understand where they are coming from and their fear because they've been under the Roman Empire and then the Roman Empire trying to assimilate all kinds of culture, you can understand why in their trying to protect their culture, in their trying to protect their identity, they get to so, be so focused on the keeping of the Sabbath or the keeping of the law that's why this man in the synagogue, the leader, is like the elder or the pastor in that synagogue, he stood up. And by his so intent, intended, you know, he has this focused, focus on keeping the identity and preserving the tradition, he totally missed something that is more important than the tradition. But it's good for us to understand where he is coming from. For him, he was righteous. For him, he was trying to preserve an identity. But when we read it now, we see he missed the point. Because Christ came as the Messiah. And Christ knew that there is this culture that is so held on, almost like a bondage. A society that is almost like crippled. Not being able to straighten up. A society that is bent out of shape by the shackles of their traditions. 
And Christ comes in to straighten it out. But because of such attitude, because of the legalism of what they have, they totally miss the Messiah, Jesus Christ. So here we see kind of a two picture of a woman that is bent out of shape, that needs to be straightened. And also of a civilization or a, or a nation like Israel that is also crippled, also needing to be shaken up. And they miss the point. So let's go to Luke chapter 13, verse 11. It's a very interesting story because if you try to imagine yourself, let's imagine ourselves in that story. Let me read it again, verse 10. On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues. That is their church at the time. Like we have our church here, the synagogues. And they come every week to worship the synagogues. And Jesus Christ was a rabbi. He was a teacher of the people, recognized teacher. And a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. A woman. So another challenge here in this story is that, well, it is a Sabbath. It's controversial to work on a Sabbath. Two, there is a woman. And for that particular society, women were not esteemed the same as men. They're almost in the lower ranks. A woman. And then the case of touching a woman is another issue there, another problem. And it's just not just a woman, but this woman is with an infirmity. And again, in that background, you know, if you are a woman and then you have an infirmity, you are looked by the society much less. And worse, not only in, with infirmity, Luke says that this, this infirmity is caused by a certain spirit, demonic spirit. Now, the Bible doesn't say that all sickness are of demonic spirit. There's probably like 26 infirmities in the Bible, only seven are mentioned with that situation. But I think there is a reason why, why Luke writes that also and includes it because here is Jesus Christ who is going to be the Messiah. He is the Savior. He has to be introduced. He, Jesus Christ has got to be seen as the Messiah, but people don't see that. And so Jesus Christ here is being introduced by by Luke, as he has done in the past stories here. So here was a woman who was there who had been crippled by spirit for 18 years. That's a long time to be crippled for 18 years. And it says she was bent over. I remember when I, when my brother and I were pointing our baseboard, you know, in our house, and I was bent over for like hours painting and then when I tried to straighten up I could not you know it was so painful because somehow you know the backbone is hurting but for 18 years this woman was bent over put yourself in her situation for 18 years all you see are mostly feet mud dust and people avoiding you that is the sad thing also with Dealing with people who may be different from us. Mostly the society struggles with how do we deal with such situation. And most likely, in fact we will see this later explained, that they look down on her. Oh yes, he came to church. That's one, the only good thing about this story as far as in this case, this woman, in spite of the fact that for 18 years she was crippled bent over, having difficulty. I think I put a picture there, that woman bent over. And yet this woman came to church, came to the synagogue. She felt it as important. She went there. And she could not straighten up at all. I mean, she can't do anything about it. That's what it says. This woman, woman was bent over and could not straighten up at all. So for 18 years, that's all she was, just struggling, walking, bent over, can even probably have a good job. People don't look, people cannot make, look at her from head to toe with prejudice and 
discomfort and this woman kept on coming to church and or the synagogue just keep on how you know the, her faithfulness the struggle and whispers that probably she hears from people so you can imagine how how happy how joyful she is in this story when when Jesus says woman you are loose from this infirmity and suddenly she was straightened up I mean won't you feel the same I mean, if we are bent and out of shape and in pain and, and the society looks down on us and suddenly we're straightened up, we will dance with joy. But of course, the reaction from the church leader is different in this case. When Jesus saw her, and there's some, what is good about Jesus Christ? We've seen this in other examples of that Jesus Christ is often on those that are bent, those who have difficulties. Jesus sees this woman who, you know, this widow who gave him the, the might. This woman was an issue of blood. This woman who was caught in adultery. When you see this, you know, this person who is blind, Jesus sees this multitude and he felt pity for them. That's our Lord Jesus Christ. The eyes of Jesus are focus on those people who struggle in life. That's what attracts Jesus. He sees them. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward. So he called her and said to her, so when she called her, she walked by, you know, close to Jesus. That's one good thing. She responded. She obeyed Jesus and responding to Jesus' call and said, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her, that's another issue. Because, whoa, you know, Rabbi putting his hand on a woman, crippled with a spirit. Whoa, you know, on a Sabbath day. So all these things, so you can imagine the emotions. I mean, for us, when we read the story today, we just read it quickly, you know, without really feeling the actual happenings there, but at that time that was, whoa, there is something, and, and of course this religious leader is trying to protect the Judaistic theology of, hey, you have to keep our identity, you have to keep the Sabbath, and so it's painful. And so this person, who is this, you know, we person up are trying to steal, steal away, you know, what we're doing here and trying to introduce something new, and so he was upset. So then when he put his hand and then immediately she straightened up and praised God. So once she straightened up and praised God, I mean, if you are there, if you are the woman, if I were the woman, I would dance and sing, won't you? If you are the witnesses, swimming in church, somebody comes and then somebody was healed instantly, how would we react? I mean, it's happy. I mean, that's how we would react. But... Notice in verse 14, isn't it sad? That the first thing that the reaction was indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue leader said to the people, so he stood up, there are six days for work. So come and be healed on those days. How pathetic. You know? I said, what? There are six days and why don't you come? You know, and be healed on those days and not on the Sabbath. The man did not see what is so obvious. The man did not see what is right in front of his eyes. Legalism has blinded this man from seeing Jesus and the power of Jesus. But instead, he only sees his tradition. Six days of work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. In fact, he was even wrong in applying the scriptures. You know, he doesn't even represent the old covenant well because Jesus said in verse 15, the Lord answered him, You hypocrites! You know, somebody said, A.W. Tozer one time said, If Jesus Christ preached the same way preachers preach today, they will not be crucified. Crucified. You know? uh, I mean, he will not be crucified, Jesus Christ. I mean, so if, if Jesus Christ, you know, preaches us today with being politically correct, but not Jesus. The Lord answered him, you hypocrites, doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey?
from the stall and lead it out to give water. This is something they do. When, you know, then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? Jesus is saying, even the, the Talmud, you see, what happened is that the Jews are so afraid of losing their identity. They're the chosen nations, and they compare themselves better than the Gentiles. And they're so focused on that that they miss the whole point. And Jesus says, your laws care for animals more than you care for this woman. That's basically what Jesus is saying. You care for an ox or a donkey. You understand that. You know, Jesus is saying, you, under, you untie them and give them water to drink. But, but this woman, you don't care, Jesus is saying. Why is that? That's why he said, that's hypocrisy. And when he, verse 17, when he said this, all his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. So there are three issues that I would like to mention here. That Jesus Christ confronts. Okay? The obvious one is that of legalism. This person is just, okay, on that aspect of tradition, legalistic aspect, we've got to do this, it's got to be obeyed. That's what the law of Moses says, that's legalism. And Jesus Christ confronts that and says, what is more important is His love, is His grace over that. Can't you see it? You have grace over the ox and the donkey. Why not this woman? He confronts that. And then that of hypocrisy, He confronts that too. Because this person you know, is introduced as the pastor or the leader of the synagogue. He is one who represents God. But that's hypocrisy. One who represents God, but one who doesn't understand God's love and mercy. That's this problem. And the third issue is that of prejudice. Prejudice against human beings who may not be well, who may be different from us. That's another because here he mentioned here, there must be a reason why Jesus Christ and Luke, Luke recorded it. He said here in verse 16, Then should not this woman, a daughter, a descendant, an offspring of Abraham. Now when the Bible says that, it means a lot when that is mentioned. You know, he could have been said, okay, a Benjamite or a Jew. But Jesus looked at this person who has this crippling challenge in life. And when Jesus saw her, Jesus saw a daughter of Abraham. That is a, a beautiful description. Jesus saying, why do you push away? Why do we have prejudice against certain people? And the way Jesus says, he looks at it, he is a part of us. She is part of us. She is one of us, Jesus is saying. She is part of the family. She is a woman of faith in many ways because she comes to the synagogue. That's at that time, that was their church. She comes. And Jesus says, she is a woman of faith. But they miss that again. The people miss. I think it's a lesson for us even how do we as Christians, how do we deal with people who may be different from us? How do we treat our wives, our husbands? You know, in this case, they look down. In that society, they look down on women, especially those that have infirmities. We are all faced with our own, as I talk to the men here first, you know, how do we look at the opposite sex? 
The society at the time of Jesus, they look at women of lesser value. And Jesus Christ now comes with a new teaching. And he's telling us that in the kingdom of God, there is neither women or men, slave or free. I mean, he goes through that in the kingdom of God, we're all the same. By grace, we're all honorable. Christ died for everybody. Jesus Christ says in the kingdom of God, men will have respect for women. Women are a special that we should honor them and not neglect them. As Jesus Christ honored them himself. We should not ever look at women and make them like objects. Because when we look at our society today, if we look at women the same way Hollywood and movies look at women, we are no different than those people in the olden days. But Jesus Christ looked at women with love and respect and humility and compassion. I think it's the same way for us as Christ people. That we, when we look at our wives and our daughters and our sisters or any women at all, that we should look at them with love and respect and not objectify them, making them like objects. Do you know what I mean? Pornography, for example. It's a bad example where people look at them and look at them as like objects. That is not Christ-like. It's not. That's why Christ says, people, this woman is one of us. She is family. She's a daughter of Abraham. Can we say the same to other women? And we can begin with our family. Can we husbands look at our wives with such love and honor and respect for them? I know some of us are getting older, right? But when we look at, when we are influenced by this world, when we are influenced by Hollywood, when we begin to compare our spouse with Hollywood model type, you know, then we are being like the world. It can be also with the women when we look at our men and lose respect for the men that God has given us. In the same way as we should respect women women also should look at the men and give them also the love and the respect and not put them down because of physical deformities or defects or getting old or whatever it is but but to recognize each other with with love and respect and humility i think this is what jesus christ is teaching us you might forget all the other parts of the message that I want to mention here about the legalism aspect and, and the hypocrisy, but the third one, and that of showing love and respect for all people. People who come to church, what if they have tattoos and earrings? What if they smell? What if, I mean, I can mention all of this. How do we look at them? What if they have a difficulty with their sexual identities? Do we immediately judge people? Will Jesus Christ do that? People look at this adulterous woman and they quickly say, Sinner! Adulterous woman! I mean, that's what the world does, right? They see a sinner. But Jesus Christ saw a woman and saw a daughter of God. That's Christian. So a daughter of God, instead of quickly judging, instead of condemning. I mean, a lot of these things come to us because we live in this 2013 and we hear of news and, and it affects us in every small aspect of our lives. So somebody gets sick, how do we treat them? How do we look at them? Somebody can walk, somebody gets blind, somebody gets pregnant out of marriage. Well, how do we as Christians behave and react? Do we condemn, you know? Not Jesus. Do we cast the stone? Not Jesus. Does it mean that we approve of such behavior? Of course not. But the reaction that we see in the scripture, as in this case, was 
Jesus Christ was preaching. He was teaching the people. And as he was teaching, this woman came in the synagogue. And at the corner of the eye of Jesus, he, sees, he saw this woman walking in. And he stopped his sermon and called the woman to him and said, Woman, you are free from your infirmity. And then the man complained, you know, oh, you should not have done that. And then, you hypocrites, Jesus says, don't you know that this is a woman of, I mean, a daughter of Abraham? She is one of us. So Christ, the Messiah, is abolishing that attitude of legalism. He's saying that we should be authentic with our Christianity and not hypocrites. And also we should understand that God loves all humanity and for us to be effective to be effective in our evangelism we should love people we should have that respect and love for people who may be different from us who may be whoever they may be that's why when I look at this I just marvel at the fact that Oh, what a blessing it is that we have such a Savior. Savior who loves, a Savior who cares for us. A Savior who teaches us that, hey, you know, we should love and respect. It's, I think I can't emphasize that. I think that's probably, you know, I could have focused more on the legalism aspect of this message or the hypocrisy. But I think God wants us to focus on this, on loving respecting each other in the congregation or wherever we are. Let us look at people now from the eyes of Jesus Christ, not from the eyes of the world or Hollywood, but let us lift them up in our perspective, especially people who are different or those of the opposite sex. Amen. Okay, let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you so much for this brief story of Jesus Christ, written by Luke. Jesus Christ, Lord God, who noticed this woman. A woman, Lord, who struggled for 18 years. Perhaps he comes to church or synagogue desiring to hear the word to hear the teachings. But what happened is that I see desire to hear the word, and yet something else happened. Her body was healed. But perhaps as we desire for our, for our souls to be fixed, perhaps it's through that desire that our bodies will also be healed. Help us to stay humble, just like this woman, Lord, that she was faithful. Though there were probably a lot of persecutions, or discrimination, or prejudice, or indifference, and yet she was faithful. She was a woman of faith coming to the synagogue. She didn't ask for healing, and yet you gave it to her because of her faithfulness. Help us also to see us, Jesus, to see people who may make us uncomfortable, but to see them through the eyes of Jesus, to see them with love, respect. It doesn't matter how they look like, whatever background or situation they're in, but that we pray and, and help them and, and serve them as best as we could. Lord, thank you. And and for us, Lord, who may be like the woman who, when God looks down and tells us we are free and gives us the freedom, that in response that we also obey and go to Him and also respond with praise and thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for being here in our lives, in our families, in the church. All this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen.